Tri-City State University Viking. Welcome back to the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network as we get ready for the final game of our four-game set between the visiting Valley City State University Vikings and the home team, the Bellevue University Bruins. Mick Krupski back behind the microphone. And as you can see from your video screen, we are just about ready to jump back into the action. On the mound for the Bruins in game number two, fourth game of the four-game set. Gavin Wooshke on the mound, the right-hander 2-0 and on the season, a 5.12 earned run average. First year in the program for Gavin. He's a freshman, six foot four, out of Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Another part of that Canadian crew on the Bellevue Bruins this year. The Bruins have won the first three games in this four game set, winning the first game this afternoon by a score of 18 to two. The Bruins got out in front early with a sixth spot in the second inning and never looked back to win it by a score of 18 to 2. The Bruins are now 14 and 9 overall. Valley City State with the loss drops to 8 and 16. Same lineup for the Bruins in game number 2 of this doubleheader as we saw in game number 1. Across the infield, Alec Ackerman at first, CJ Townsend at second, Brendan Luther at shortstop, and Nick Grade at third. Across the outfield, Steven Elsner in left. Jake Lacey in center and Anthony Lynn in right. The battery, Logan Grant behind the plate once again. And on the mound, Gavin Wooshke leading it off for the Valley City Vikings. Designated hitter, Tori Nelson. Thanks again for joining us for the second game of the doubleheader. The Bruins hoping to get the four game sweep. As here comes the first pitch from Gavin Wooshke. Breaking ball in the dirt. Bruins have out hit the Vikings in each of the first three games of this series. Hoping to complete the job here with the four game start of the season of the conference season. There's a fastball in the zone for a strike number one. Our first text message actually came in at the end of the last message. Congratulations to Coach Sean Malley on 1,000 wins during his career. The Locke family, happy to have Bruins baseball back on. Eric Locke, a former Bellevue baseball guy back in the day, so good to see that his family is still listening in. Two and one now the count on Tory Nelson, and we invite you to be part of our broadcast once again today. 4-0-2. 515-7654 is my number. That pitch fouled back against the netting of the backstop. Evens account count at two and two. Wooshke, a big guy on the mound. Six foot four, 220 pounds. Pitch chopped in the ground. Brendan Luther trying to get there. Third baseman instead. Nice job cutting in front by Nick Grade. It would have been a very difficult play for the shortstop, but Grade had a good angle. Gets it there across the diamond in time. And one up, one down. Next up for the Vikings, shortstop Jaden Babiuk. That is the second spot for BCSU, the shortstop Jaden once again, you're hearing the voice of Simon Falcon, the PA announcer here in the background of our broadcast. First pitch opposite way. Steven Elsner gives chase, and he'll settle underneath it. One pitch and another out in the books as Elsner takes the fly ball off the bat of Jaden Babiuk. Three-hole hitter for the Vikings, the catcher, Jamel Chabot. That is the third spot. The catcher, Jamel Chabot. Chabot has had a hit in each of the three games of this series for the Viking squad. Pat fastball just a little bit upstairs on the first offering to Chabot. Slider just off the outside edge. So two pitches close, but not quite. As we mentioned in the earlier broadcast, Chabot, the only hitter above the 300 mark for the Vikings. He's ahead in the count now, 3-0. and Coming into today's action, hitting at 318. As a team, the Vikings hitting at 247.
There's a pitch in the zone. Let's see if Gavin can come all the way back. Three and one, now the count on Chabot. Garlic salt is a spice. If you weren't with us for game number one, temperature expected to be in the mid 50s today. On the outside corner, Chabot thought it was a little wide, already tossed the bat heading to first, but he'll have to retrieve it and get back into the box. Full count. A windy day. You can see the flag on the poles out in center field blowing stiffly from the left side to the right side. And that one goes over the top of everybody. And so Jamel Chabot will earn the two-out walk. As the catcher, he is allowed a courtesy runner. Justin Rogers has been doing it most of the series. He flies back across the field, so we'll put Rogers in as the courtesy runner. For the Vikings, number three, Justin Rogers. At the plate. Cleanup hitter Caden Rosdema. Breaking ball, misses away. Nice job by catcher Logan Grant to corral that one. Rose Dema, a tall target at the plate. Wooshki, a tall target at the mound. So two six foot four guys battling each other here. Upstairs on that fastball. Wooshki with good pop on the fastball. This is his seventh appearance on the season. A 2-0 record. Throw over to first, runner back in time. 19 and a third innings coming into today for Gavin. In those 19 innings, 18 hits, 22 strikeouts, only six walks. 5.12 earn run average for Wooshki. There's a pitch down the heart of the plate. Now again, Wooshki trying to battle back after falling behind. And it'll be back-to-back -back walks. First to Chabot, now to Rosdema. And the runner in scoring position for the batter, right fielder Judson Seliscar. The right fielder Judson Seliscar. Wooshki delivers first pitch. That's foul out of play opposite way. Seliscar, 214 hitter on the season coming into today's action. Took a little something off, but misses upstairs. Swing and a miss. Looked like that might have been a changeup as Wooshki took a little something off that one. Gavin played two years of Juco ball at Okanagan College in British Columbia. Okanagan, thank you. I knew that didn't sound right when it came out of my out of my mouth. Misses again on that one. He was a second team all-conference both years. Here's the 2-2 pitch. And a strike three call on the knees. Logan Grant dropped it and quickly tagged the back of the leg of Judson Seliscar for the strikeout to retire the side. No runs. On no hits, 
There were no errors and two base runners left on on the two walks in the inning. After a half, the Vikings nothing, and the Bellevue Bruins coming to bat. We've got our gamely baby from the Townsend in Oregon. Let's go Bruins. Let's stay hot. Glad you guys are with us once again. CJ's family listening in as always on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Same batting order for the Bruins in game number two as in game number one. We'll go through it again here real quickly with you. Jake Lacey, Logan Grant, Alec Ackerman, Stephen Elsner, the four-hole hitter, then Brendan Luther, Nick Grade, C.J. Townsend, Anthony Lind, and Bryce Zimmerer in the nine-hole as the designated hitter. On the mound for the Valley City Vikings is number nine, Takao Cookson, a freshman from Regina, Saskatchewan. So we've got an all-Canadian matchup on the mound in today's final game of the four-game set. In the field for the Vikings, the shortstop, number six, Jake Aviak. <laughs> Catcher, number five, Jamel Chabot. First base, number 28, Kate Roosevelt. Right field. Cookson has a 3.00 earned run average in 24 innings pitched. Base. He's allowed 21 hits and has struck out 30 and walked only six. So kind of similar numbers at center field. for both pitchers. They're different body styles. As we mentioned, Wooshke at six foot four. Cookson at five foot ten. So about a half a foot difference in height, but both can be very effective in getting the job done on the hill. Leading it off for the Bellevue Bruins, center fielder Jake Lacey. The center fielder, Jake Lacey. Every single one of the Bellevue nine starters in game number one got at least one hit. Several of them with multiples. Lacey had three hits, two singles and a double. Also was on with a walk, so getting the job done in that leadoff spot. Here's the first pitch from Cookson to Lacey, a breaking ball in the zone for a called strike one. The wind and the pitch. On the knees with a fastball, strike two. Cookson will work from the traditional windup with nobody on base. Foul back to the screen. Lacey on that one, but underneath it, just a fuzz. A fuzz, that's a technical baseball term. Next pitch, one hop to catcher Jaden Babiuk. Here's the one, two. Line back through the middle. Nice job of keeping the hands back by Jake Lacey. As the pitch broke over the plate, he lined it back where it came from. And the Bruins have their leadoff guy on once again. Two hole hitter for the Bruins is the catcher, Logan Grant. Grant, 333 batting average coming in. Had a couple of hits in game number one, including a monster three-run home run as part of the Bruins' seven-run second inning to jump to an early lead. Lacey gets his lead off of first. The pitch from Cookson looked like it might have been a changeup or a screwball as it kept going away from the left-handed hitting Grant. That one's hit hard in the right center field over near the scoreboard, and it's out of here. Off the trees, beyond the right center field, France. A two-home run day for Logan Grant. As he once again jolts the Bruins to a lead. Cheers from the fans on hand. Helmet taps as well from his teammates as... Logan Grant goes yard once again for Logan. That is his eighth home run of the year. The first, spot, the first baseman, Alec 
Ackerman. And I'll bring to the plate first baseman Alec Ackerman. First pitch on the outside edge for a called strike one by Cookson. Breaking ball misses away. Alec was hit in the head by a pitch in the previous game. Not showing Ill, any ill effects after the fact. Didn't like it when it happened, but who would? That pitch drops low, two and one. Advantage to Ackerman in this situation. Alec coming in, hitting 333. As a team, the Bruins came in hitting 292. And with 19 hits in that game, number one, their team average will go up a few more points. Maybe even close to that 300 mark. Three and one now the count to Alec. The Parker, Colorado native awaits. Fouls that one out of play. Cookson having some difficulty with his headgear, was wearing a headband underneath his cap. Now he's decided that's not worth the effort, so he takes that off and just puts his cap on and gets back to work. Breaking ball, fooled Ackerman, and the strikeout is the first out of the inning. So a pretty sharp breaking curve, slider, whatever you want to call it. Has some pretty sharp break and gets the strike out there. Here's the Bruins cleanup hitter, left fielder, Stephen Elsner. Elsner went yard in the previous game, a two-run home run. Just off the outside edge, ball one. First home series of the year for the Bellevue Bruins after playing all their Previous games on the road. Started the season in Arizona, played some games in Oklahoma, a set against Briarcliff in Sioux City, and then a week long trip to Florida. 2 1 the count on Elsner. Off the outside edge, make it 3 and 1. Elsner, a San Francisco native, first year with the Bellevue Bruins. Tries to hold back on the breaking ball, but comes up empty. Count goes full. Started his college career playing at the College of Marin out in California. Here's the payoff pitch from Cookson. He's got a little piece of that, also got a little piece of the catcher. Jamel Chabot. You got the mask, you've got the chest protector, you got the shin guards, other protection as well, and somehow those foul tips always find an unprotected part of your body. Looks like he's going to be okay. We'll do the three, two over once again. Low and away, Elsner draws the one out walk. He'll head down to first base, and that'll bring to the plate to shortstop, Brendan Luther. Luther with a couple of sterling defensive plays in game number one today. Not too shabby at the plate either with a couple of hits. On a two for three day, a walk as well. A lot of the reserves for the Bruins got into the action. Both teams got into the action. Late in the first game. That one's hit well to right center field. Again, out near the scoreboard. That one's going to track beyond the scoreboard. A two-run home run. First by Logan Grant and now by Brendan Luther. The Bru Bruins are bringing out the home run shoes. This series, two home runs in game one, two home runs in game two, three home runs in game three. And already two home runs here in game four in the first inning. So a little celebration by the Bruin bench. For Brendan Luther, that is home run number five. As he's gone yard in both games of today's doubleheader. 
That'll bring to the plate third baseman Nick Grade. Fouls a breaking ball out off the screen. Oh, a solo home run for Brendan in game number one. A two-run shot here in game number two. As he jumps his home run total, or RBI total 15, that one gets through the left side, past the diving third baseman, Hunter Logan. No, Nick Grade continues swinging a hot bat for the Bruins. Speaking of hot bats, here's the leading hitter for the Bruins on the season, second baseman, C.J. Townsend. Third year in the program for C.J., his playing time and his success has increased exponentially each league year. Swings through a changeup. Last year, C.J. wound up hitting 236. This year, a little bit better, 389. Gray back easily on that soft toss over to first base. Townsend steps back in. Breaking ball, clips the outside corner, down 0-2. Wind has been blowing out of the northwest steady at 20 miles an hour. We've had gusts into the 30s. Flag out in center field pretty much blowing straight out right now. CJ swings and misses another changeup. He goes down for the second out of the inning. Both outs have been strikeouts for pitcher Takao Cookson. The next batter, the eighth batter of the inning for the Bruins, the right fielder, Anthony Lind. Anthony Lind. Lind with a couple of hits, including an RBI triple in game number one today. Breaking ball. Down low, ball one. Two-man umpiring crew, same guys as in game one. That pitch misses up. Austin Nelson behind the plate, calling the balls and strikes. Brandon Dislagi out in the field. Breaking ball misses. A 3-0 start in this at-bat for Anthony Lind. And four pitches that were close, but not quite good enough. And Anthony Lynn draws the four-pitch walks to advance Nick Gray to second. And the Bruins will bat around the first inning as Bryce Zimmerer, the designated hitter, steps in. Bryce Zimmerer. Cookson looks the runner back to second and delivers. Off balance swing and a miss by Zimmer. The set, the pitch. Down low, one and one. First series of the regular season in the North Star Athletic Association for both of these teams. After being home this weekend, the Bruins on the road next weekend at Dickinson State, North Dakota. Off the mark on that curveball outside. The longest conference road trip of the year for the Bruins as they bust it up to Dickinson, North Dakota. Two and one the counts. Bruins do have a 
game on Tuesday here, non-conference game against Morningside. We'll have that one for you on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Again, down low, 3-1 the count, so advantage to the hitter, Bryce Zimmer. 2 o'clock start on the Tuesday game against Morningside. Let's not look too far ahead. Hit on the ground to short. Throw across the diamond is in time. The play made by shortstop Jaden Babiuk. But the Bruins, a successful inning number one. They put up four runs on four hits. There were no errors. Four runs. And one man left on base. After one complete, the Bellevue Bruins four. The Valley City Vikings nothing. The Montana McMahons are watching again up in Bozeman. Keep the drive alive. Go Bruins and go Parker. All right. Glad you guys are with us once again. So the Townsends and the Parkers, we've heard from a couple of other families as well in game number one. Those two families doing double duty today with their text messages. We appreciate you sending that along. Gavin Wooshke ready to get back to work for the Bruins. He got through the first inning unscathed. A couple of base runners on via the walk, but nothing on the board for the Vikings. In the top of the second inning, it'll be left fielder Cameron Perro to start things off. Cameron Perro. Breaking ball from Wooshke. Starts it off in the zone. 0-1 the count. Foul tipped into the glove of Logan Grant. 0-2. Same cast of characters up here in the press box. Tom, Bill, Simon and me, Mick Krupski, bringing you the broadcast, doing the live stats, doing the PA, doing the music, the scoreboard. We're multitasking up here, aren't we? One and two the count. Fouled back on a fastball. Perro had one hit in game number one, one for two. Hit down to the right field side. The wind is pushing it toward the foul line. Anthony Lynn giving chase. And Anthony with the grab out of camera view. Take my word for it. He made a nice running catch about 10 feet into foul territory as the wind kept pushing the ball away from him. But he stayed with it and made the play for the first out of the inning. Next up, second baseman, Kellen Scruggs. Second baseman, Kellen Scruggs. Foul over in the front of the Bruin dugout. Scruggs been at second base all four games for the Vikings. Right-handed batter. Illinois native. Breaking ball a little bit low. All Canadian battery for the Bruins today with Gavin Wischke on the mound and Logan Grant behind the plate. Breaking ball in the zone, called strike. Logan Grant behind the plate, so flexible, gets down so low to present the target for his pitcher. With nobody on base, he'll drop to one knee, basically just flatten out at the bottom of the zone. That little jam job fouled straight back. Grant from Alberta, Wischke from Saskatchewan. 
Breaking ball on the outside corner. Foul tips as a home plate umpire off the bat of Scruggs into the glove of Grant. Second strikeout for Gavin Wischke. Next up for the Vikings, third baseman Hunter Logan. Number 21, Hunter Logan. Fastball up and away. Logan, a 250 hitter coming into today's action. Down low. Logan 0 for 3 in game number one. There's a pitch, fastball, outer half, two and one now the count. Vikings only collected five hits in game number one. Bellevue had 19. Popped up into center field. Coming on, Jake Lacey battling the wind, battling the sun, uses that glove to help shield the sunshine. And he'll make the catch. It's a three up, three down, top of the second inning for the Vikings after one and a half. The Bruins four and the Vikings nothing. The way John Stella Field is situated, we orient towards the northeast. So at this point in the afternoon, center field basically is the sun field. As the game goes on, it'll move around to the right side. So right now, as you saw in that last play, high fly balls hit to straightaway center field will provide the fielders with a little bit of extra degree of difficulty. To Kyle Cookson, back to the mound for his second inning of work for the Vikings. As I mentioned, a 3.00 earned run average. That's going to go up a little bit as he allowed four earned runs on those two two-run home runs for the Bruins. Vikings trying to salvage one game of this four-game set. Bellevue Bruins trying to do what they did last year and sweep the four-game series against Valley City. Last year's series was supposed to have been played in Valley City, North Dakota, but because of the wintry conditions, it was moved here. In fact, Bellevue played all seven of their conference series at home last year because of the bad weather conditions further north. Hey, Jake Lacey is going to start it all over again. Let off the first, he'll lead off the second as the Bruins sent nine to the plate in acquiring those four runs. First pitch inside, ball one. Upstairs, 2-0. and oh. Lacey, the Gillette, Wyoming native. That one's hit hard, but it's going to go out of play foul. Just a little bit ahead of that one. Two and one the count. Cookson looks in, doesn't like the initial signal put down by Chabot. That pitch stays inside. Now three and one. One of the favorite counts for hitters as they can be very selective. That one in the zone. Jake kind of shaking his head after that one. May have let a pretty good pitch go by. Now it's three and two and have to change a little bit of his philosophy. Hacks that one off the front of the dugout. Dwayne Monluck's trying to flag it down, but old guy's not quite quick enough to make the play. I'll get punched if he hears that on a rebroadcast. Again, the three-two pitch from Cookson. Breaking ball misses away. Good play discipline by Jake Lacey to lay off that one. So Lacey's been up twice, been on twice. In game number one, he was up four times and was on all four times. So a perfect six for six and getting on base from that leadoff spot. 
Timeout requested by head coach Alec DeMaria as he wants to go and talk to his starting pitcher, and that's going to be the end of the line for Takao Cookson. Kind of a quick hook for Cookson as the Vikings will go to the bullpen and bring in a southpaw. Looks like number 12 to me, huh? Number 12 is Connor Nelson, a left-handed pitcher. He's a sophomore out of Hitterdahl, Minnesota. Connor Nelson, let's get his name in the book, and then we'll tell you a little bit more about him. Warming up on the mound for the Vikings. Number 12, the left-handed pitcher, Connor Nelson. All right, for Connor Nelson, a 3.65 earned run average, an 0-3 record, so the earned run average is better than the record would indicate. His eighth appearance on the year, he's thrown 12 in the third innings, has allowed 12 hits, and has struck out 17. A little bit more to know about Connor Nelson. Once again, a recap of this series. Bruins winning game number one by a score of seven to four. Winning game number two by a score of 10 to six. And winning today's earlier game in a route 18 to two. Last year, the Bellevue squad, I believe I scored, I think it was four times the Bruins scored over 20 runs in a game. Have yet to get to 20 this year, but 18 was pretty darn close. All right, back to the plate. The first man that Connor Nelson will face is the Bruins catcher, Logan Grant. Grant went yard his last time up. Logan Grant. Grant also went yard in game number one. Five runs batted in thus far today for Logan. That's a nice week's worth. Breaking ball for a called strike one on this lefty-lefty matchup. Chabot sets up on the outer half. That's where the pitch goes, but a little bit too low, one and one. Now Chabot sets up on the inner half. The pitch low and away, two and one the count. I was like back in my umpiring days when the catcher didn't set up exactly behind home plate. I liked it when they were a little bit to the outer half. That gave you a better look over their shoulder at the outside corner. Again, three pitches about in the same spot, low and away, so hitting advantage to Logan Grant at three and one. Here's the three one. And again, low and away, so four consecutive spit, uh, pitches in that same spot. Grant will draw the walk. Out of the dugout will pop to Kumi Maeno. He'll come on as the courtesy runner. For Grant, so. Running at first base the Bruins. Runners at first and second, still nobody out in the second inning, and the batter will be first baseman Alec Ackerman. Up into the batter's box. For the Bruins. First baseman, Alec Ackman. Number 16 on the back of the jersey of Alec Ackerman. Slightly open stance. Runners go, a great jump. 
by Lacey from second base as the pitcher Nelson wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to him, so both runners will get credit for a stolen base. But Lacey, the one with a great jump and a good job by Takumi Mieno to realize what the lead runner was doing. So two in scoring position. Vikings will pinch their corner infielders up a little closer to try to cut down a run at the plate. With nobody out in the inning, they'll probably make the ball go through before trying to take an advance. 2-0 the count to Ackerman. Breaking ball in the zone, 2-1. Alex not looking for off speed there. Right back to the pitcher, Nelson. He looks to run her back to third and makes the play to first base. Three, uh, one to three for the first out of the inning. Well, the Bruins don't advance on that situation, but here now, left fielder Stephen Elsner will try to drive a run or two home. The left fielder, Stephen Elsner. Elsner with six home runs on the season. That's second on the team behind Grant, who has eight. Breaking ball in the zone. Popped up. Will the wind push it out of play? First baseman Rosabug giving chase. Right fielder Ramirez giving chase, and neither one can make the play. Or excuse me, that's Seliscar, the right fielder. No, 0 and 2 the count on Steve Elsner. Trying to make contact, get something to the outfield to score either on a sacrifice fly or a base hit. Strikeout would be huge for the Vikings here. Contact important for Bellevue. Bounced, blocked up by Chabot. Now one and two. Head coach Dwayne Monlux patrolling the third base coaching box. 14th year at the helm of the Bruin program. Called strike three. Elsner knew it. Got fooled. A fastball game right down the heart of the plate. So a good bit of pitching under duress by Connor Nelson. Getting a comebacker and a strikeout. So now it'll be up to shortstop Brendan Luther to drive in the two runs. He's already got two RBIs in this game with a home run his last time up. The wind and the pitch. Breaking ball in the zone. Oh. Starting to see a sequence here for Nelson using that breaking ball effectively to get ahead in the count. Fastball foul out of play. O'Connor Nelson one strike away from getting out of this difficulty in the bottom of the second inning. Bruins got the first two guys on. Got them to second and third with nobody out. Let's see if the Bruins can cash in. Wide. One and two. Jake Lacey in the base runner at third, trying to distract the pitcher a little bit by aggressively charging down the line in foul territory. Two and two. Chabot with a nice block. Here's the windup and the 2-2 pitch. Little chopper in front of the plate, but it's going to go into foul territory. The pitch. They'll appeal to the base umpire. They say no swing. <laughs> Luther able to hold it up, so that'll bring a full count. Actually, Brendan and 
catcher Jamel Chabot. Uh, Exchange a little joke. No. Now they're serious and get back to work. Well, Here's the payoff pitch from Connor Nelson. I'm glad. On the inside corner, it came back and just clipped a little bit of the edge of the black. So a comebacker and two strikeouts by Connor Nelson. Get the Vikings out of trouble in the second inning for the Bellevue Bruins. No runs on no hits. There were no errors and two left on base. The two walks did not hurt the Vikings in the inning after two complete. It's Bellevue four, Valley City nothing. <laughs> All right, back to the action. Top of the third inning. It'll be the 9-1-2 part of the Valley City order. Gavin Wuschke back on for his third inning of work for the Bruins. Bellevue with a 4 to nothing lead, trying to go for the four-game sweep of this series. Valley City at home. Dickinson State next weekend on the road. Waldorf on the road. The next weekend, it'll be a non-conference tiff against Peru State. Then Mayville State on the road, and the Bruins finish with Dakota State and Viterbo at home in the North Star Athletic Association. Leading it off, center fielder Dagan Morcom. First pitch swinging, grounded to C.J. Thompson. Townsend at second base. He'll handle it for the first out. Very efficient start to the top of the third inning. I would take kids that just want to work hard and get better. Bellevue has only had one error in the previous three games and thus far here in the fourth. Back to the top of the order. Here's Tory Nelson, the designated hitter, a called strike one. Little tight, one and one. Bellevue fielding at a 969 percentage on the season. And that's including one, Garrett, one game down in Oklahoma that was just atrocious. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. They had a nine-air game against University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Fastball blew right by Nelson. The 1-2. Chopped on the ground again. C.J. Townsend gloves it, throws it. And we have two outs. Couple of assists in the inning for C.J. We knew they, we knew As the next batter will be the shortstop, Jaden Babiuk. Honestly, he made his like, own little program up with the pair of games. And the second spot, the shortstop, Jaden Babiuk. Wishke looking in, gets his signal. Lined by right at the shortstop, and the inning is done. Brandon Luther spears that one. So the middle infielders have an active inning. A 1 2 3, top of the third inning for the Vikings. Our score remains Bellevue 4, Valley City nothing. Update from the softball double get, double header going on just a few minutes away from here at Roy Smith Field. At the end of five, it's Bellevue one and Valley City nothing. Bruins softball trying to go for the four-game sweep as well. Connor Nelson back to the mound for the Vikings. He worked out of trouble in the bottom of the second inning. The 
Bellevue Bruins rated number 15 this week in the NAIA Coaches Top 25 poll. That's the first poll of the regular season in the preseason. Bellevue, after a strong finish last year, making it to the NAIA Avista World Series. Preseason number seven. <laughs> Tough part of the schedule for the Bruins is the opening month or so when they're on the road the entire time and playing some tough competition. Whoa. Bellevue dropped to the 15 spot this week. In fact, they're tied for 15 with Loyola of Louisiana. Concordia of Nebraska out of the Great Plains Athletic Conference. The Bruins and the Concordia Bulldogs have had a nice rivalry over the last several years. The Bulldogs in the number 13 spot. Most of the other schools in the list. Oh, and Doan, excuse me. Doan as well. Uh, from Nebraska, they're number eight this week. Most of the other schools to the south of the great state of Nebraska. It'll be Grade, Townsend, and Lynn, the first three scheduled hitters for the Bruins, going against Connor Nelson. This game, number two, is a scheduled nine-inning contest. If the 10-run rule is involved after seven, we could have that. The Bruins... Had 16 runs to their good in the 18-2 win in game number one. Here's third baseman Nick Gray. Nick singled his first time up today. Now steps back in. Swing and a miss on the first fastball from Nelson. We had 381 people listening online yesterday, according to Bill. Yeah. Wow. How are we doing today? Uh, we'll All right. Here's the one-one pitch. Up and in, two and one. They say the pitch caught the inside corner. Two and two the count. Gray tried to hold up his swing, but it was in the zone anyway, so the battle continues, leading off the bottom of the third inning. Upstairs, full count upcoming. Bruins picked up four runs in the first, threatened but came up empty in the second. Here we are in the third. Swing and a miss. The tag applied at home plate to strike out is the first out of the inning. A great job by Connor Nelson coming in. He's faced five batters. He's allowed a walk, a ground out, and three consecutive strikeouts against Bellevue batters. Nelson has been the most effective pitcher in the short term for the Vikings in this series. Here's second baseman C.J. Townsend. Way wide on the breaking ball. 84 right now actively watching, so 381. That was a sum total of things from yesterday's doubleheader. So a lot of people watching college basketball maybe today or out doing some gardening. Strike called on Townsend. Strike called on Townsend again. One and two the count on the Bruins second baseman. Upstairs. One out. Two and two. One out in the bottom of the third inning. Bruins up by four. Tries to go back door again. Doesn't quite get there in time, so a full count. Nelson looks in, shakes off, now delivers. Popped up into the right center field area. It'll be the center fielder, Dagan Morcom, who Morcom comes up with it, gets a right fielder. Judson Seliscar went a long way and almost got in the way of his center fielder making the catch. 
Good thing they avoided a collision and uh, the two outfielders still talking to each other as they head back to their spots. Anthony Lynn. Anthony Lynn, the Bellevue right fielder, is next up. Lynn walked his first time up against starting pitcher Takao Cookson. That one's hit in the air to center field, but it's going to fall short of the fence as Marcon will make back-to-back -back catches to retire the side. A three-up, three-down inning for the Bruins. Haven't said that much in the series. After three complete, it's Bellevue four and Valley City nothing. I'm going to step out for a second and have a bite of my sandwich. Shh. All right, I'm feeling refreshed as we get back to the action. Currently 55 degrees in the Omaha Bellevue area. Wind out of the northwest, steady at 19 with gusts into the mid 30s. So I'm making it feel a little cooler of a day, but the sunshine feels nice. Supposed to have a cool down over the next couple of days here in the area and then warm back up to the 50s and 60s after that. I think I saw the normal high this time of year is supposed to be about 45 to 48. So we're a couple of degrees to the good. Leading off the top of the fourth inning for Valley City is the catcher, Jamel Chabot. Catcher, Jamel Chabot. Chabot walked his first time up in this one. First pitch fastball from Gavin Wischke. Another fastball. This one's fouled off the screen into the Bellevue dugout. 0-2, Wischke ahead. Gavin working exclusively from the stretch. He likes to work on the first base side of the rubber. Fouled out of play once again. Right before Gavin comes set, he'll let out a big exhale before he comes to his stop point. There it is. Not quite as big that time. Just when I pointed out. Okay. One and two now. That breaking ball in the dirt or the turf to be correct. Wojski comes set just above the belt. Slider. Slid foul down the right field side by Chabot. Fastball up high. Again, the exhale, now the pitch. Chop, come back. Wish he has it go off his glove, picks it up with a bare hand, and fires it across the first baseman, Alec Ackerman, for the first out of the inning. Good reaction by the big Bruin right-hander to make the play. Comes up smiling, and then catcher Logan Gratt said something humorous to him after he makes the play. Next up, the first baseman, Caden Rosdema. Caden Rosdema. Down low, ball one. On the upper part of the zone, called strike two. Rosedema, a pretty big target up there. 
That's the very top of the strike zone. Let's see what Wooski does at does at 0 and 2. Sky high fly ball on the infield. Who's going to want to take charge of this with the sun and the wind? And it's the third baseman who will make the play. Nice job of calling and staying with it by Nick Grade for the second out of the inning. That's a major league pop up there. Good job by Gray to stay with it. Next up, right fielder Judson Seliscar. That is the fifth spot, the right fielder Judson Seliscar. Little jam job off the hands, flared foul up the third base side. Missing away with the fastball. The set, the exhale, and the pitch. On the ground, C.J. Thompson goes up the middle, backhanded throw, backhanded catch, and then the throw. First things first, four to three on the play. Nice job by C.J. to cover some territory. And for the third consecutive inning, it's three up, three down for Valley City. After three and a half, our score remains the Bruins four and the Vikings nothing. Last year's NSAA postseason award first team was dominated by the Bellevue Bruins and the Dakota State Trojans. There were no Valley City State players on the first team. They had two on the second team, Jaden Babiuk to shortstop and starting pitcher Hunter Magnuson. The Bellevue Bruins had a whole slew of players. The ones who are returning this year include Logan Grant, Nick Grade, Jake Lacey, Dustin Shorey, and Blake Crippen. Those were the first team members. Anthony Lind also was on the second team. Bruins had several graduate players mentioned as well. Easton Brinton and Teron Williams were honorable mention on the NSAA honorable mention team. So congrats to all those guys for their achievements from last year, hoping for more continued success this year. The Bruins for the second consecutive year won the opening round regional and qualified for the NAIA Avista World Series. All right, here we go with the bottom of the fourth inning. Bruins hoping to add some more to their scoreboard totals. Bryce Zimmer will lead things off. The Bruins DH today. The designated hitter, Bryce Zimmer. You know, you've got a pretty good starting lineup when your DH bats out of the nine hole. Zimmer with a called strike one. Nick Johnstone had the DH duties yesterday. Zimmer today, one and one to count. Upstairs, two and one. Bryce is from Creighton, Nebraska. Lays off that pitch to go to three and one. Bryce played his previous college baseball at Butler Community College and at South Dakota State University. He was a jackrabbit before being a Bruin. He'll line that one into left field. Speedy guy heads around first base, a big turn there, but he'll hold as he leads off the inning with the single. Top of the order for the Bruins, here's Jake Lacey. He's been up six times today in the doubleheader. He's been on base six times today. Kanta Kobayashi, who held that leadoff spot for the Bruins the past two years, an NAIA All-American, was noted for his on-base percentage. And he'll be on again as that bullet 
Rockets down the left field corner. Here's Zimmer around second on his way to third. Dwayne Mollock's wheeling him. The relay in from short is not in time. An RBI double by Jake Lacey. As Bryce Zimmer speeding around the bases. And now five to nothing our score. Talking with assistant coach Richie Moore in between games here. Came up to the press box for a couple minutes. Said he thinks this is the fastest team that the Bruins have ever had. We saw a good example of it there with the speed of Bryce Zimmer. Catcher Logan Grant. Here's catcher Logan Grant trying to keep things going. Grant, a two-run home run and a walk in his appearances this game. The team leader in home runs with eight on the season. Nelson pitching him carefully. Behind in the count, 2-0. and oh. Lefty, lefty matchup here. Statement of the obvious, if you're watching the video online. Again, a pitch away, 3-0. and oh. Open base at first, so pitching Grant very carefully. Two home runs on the day already. And yeah, he had one yesterday too, so three home runs in this series. Yes, two hits so far this inning. Conference between the catcher and pitcher, Chabot and Nelson. A right-hander and a left-hander warming up in the Vikings' bullpen. Connor Nelson, the second pitcher of this game. The Vikings used four pitchers in the last game. And back to the action. Swinging on 3-0, and oh, grounded to the first baseman, Rosdema. He sits on it and then goes over to touch, touch the base. Three unassisted on the play. Jake Lacey advancing to third. Three-hole hitter Alec Ackerman next up in the Bruins order. In the third spot, the first baseman, Alec Ackerman. Infield will come in, trying to cut down the run on a ground ball on the infield. Fastball misses up and away. Nelson shakes his arm in frustration at that last pitch getting away from him. Quickly working, back in the zone. Alec fouls it over the top of the third base dugout. Third year in the program for Alec, but last year he was mostly a spectator, can't hold his swing there. Now one and two in the count. Ackerman has modeled several jerseys, as they say. Had some time at San Jose State University, also at the College of San Mateo, before becoming a Bellevue Bruin. Nice jump save there by the catcher, Jamel Chabot. Two balls, two strikes to count on Ackerman. Make it three and two. And that pitch bounces to the plate, so Ackerman will draw a walk. And there'll be runners at the corners for the Bruins with one away. Stepping to the plate, left fielder Steven Elsner. That is the fourth spot for BU, the left fielder Steven 
Elsner. Elsner with a couple of extra base hits in yesterday's double header, also a home run in today's first game. Fastball outer half called strike one. Runner goes from first on the hit and run, executed to perfection once again. Steven Elsner with the base hit and the RBI as Jake Lacey scores and Alec Ackerman advancing to second on the play. Six to nothing, Bruins on top. Bruins have been relentless in their offensive approach today. 19 hits in game number one. Seven hits through the first four innings. Technically three plus innings. Here's Brendan Luther, the shortstop. One for two, that one being a two run home run his first time up. Another lefty lefty matchup here. Luther can't hold up his swing. I think they say it's in the zone anyway, so 0 and 1 to count. Still just one out in the inning with runners at first and second. Ackerman at second, Elsner at first. Luther at the dish. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. That pitch just kept biting away from Brendan. Chases the high fastball, goes down swinging. Second out of the inning, and it'll be up to Nick Grade. But before we get to Nick Grade, out to the mound goes Alec De Maria, and the Vikings will have another pitching change. So after that lefty lefty matchup, a new guy coming in from the bullpen. Pretty good job of relief by Connor Nelson. As he'll head to the dugout, getting handshakes from his teammates will await the arrival of the new pitcher for the Valley City State Vikings. Here he comes. All right, number 55. The highest number on the team belongs to Jacob Marks. He'll come on with two on and two out. M-A-R-X, like the Marx Brothers. Carl Marx as well. Right-handed pitcher, number 55, Jacob Marx. Yeah. Marx has a 6.94 earned run average. A 1-0 and record on the season. Excuse me, a 1-1 one one record on the season. He's thrown 11 and two-thirds innings. He's allowed 17 hits and has struck out 10, walked six. Mark's a junior right-hander from Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. That's one of the suburbs of Minneapolis. He'll get his warm-up tosses, and the first Bruin he will face will be Nick Grade when play resumes. Six runs on seven hits for the Bellevue Bruins. Goose eggs on the board for Valley City through four. Mark's kind of a herky-jerky style on the mound. As he becomes the third pitcher of this game. For Valley City, Bellevue starter Gavin Wooski has gone all the way through the first four. All right, here we go, back with the action. Nick Grade, one for two today, a single and a strikeout. The third baseman, number 31, Nick Grade. O'Connor Nelson struck out four Bruins. 
during his time in there. Let's see how the Bruins fare against Marks. A little too tall. Ball one on the first pitch to Nick Grade. A little tardy on the fastball. One and one to count. Grade the junior out of Kennewick, Washington. Trying to increase the Bruins' current six-run lead. Swings and misses at the breaking ball. One and two. Marks come set. Halfway between the letters and the belt. Fastball upstairs, two and two. Hit in the air to right center field. Again, a couple of outfielders converging. Who's going to take charge? Again, it's the center fielder. Dagan Morcom, who will make the catch, and the side will be retired. Two runs on three hits in the inning for the Bruins. No errors and two men left on base. After four complete, the Bellevue Bruins six, the Valley City Vikings nothing. We'll throw out that text message number one final time today. We've given it several times. If you're still on the fence, should I or shouldn't I? Go ahead. Let us know who you are, where you are, who you're rooting for. Any comments you have about the game, the broadcast, life in general. We'll take just about anything here. Nothing obscene, though, please. 402-515-7654. Whether you're a Bellevue fan or a Valley City fan, that number applies to you all, 402-515-7654. Good luck to my granddaughter, Lydia. She's in a gymnastics competition in Joplin, Missouri this weekend. She's 10 years old and only the second time she's ever competed in gymnastics, so she was all nervous when they <laughs> left yesterday. All right, here we go. Back to the baseball game. Top of the fifth inning. Left fielder Cameron Perro. Cameron Perro. Nice sweeping breaking ball from Gavin Wuschke to start off the inning and start off Perro. And ground ball gloved over there by Nick Gray. Nice job moving to his glove hand side to Spirit and throw it on the money to retire Perro. For a second, I thought that was going to get in the hole, but Nick Gray made that nice play. Next up, second baseman Kellen Scruggs. Next plate for ECSU, the second baseman, number 16, Kellen Scruggs. Again, starting off with a break ball again, starting off with a break ball in the strike zone. And there goes the no hitter. As Kellen Scruggs sends that one hopper into the hole at the left field. So it took until one out in the top of the fifth inning before Gavin Wischke gives up his first hit of the game. Valley City trying to generate some offense. After that first hit, here's third baseman Hunter Logan. Pitch down low, ball one. 
Logan flew out to center field his first time up. There's a fastball nicely located, outer half. Logan 0 for 4 on the day. Swings and misses on an off-speed pitch. Throw over to first base. Scruggs back in plenty of time. Probably not going anywhere. Down by six runs. But Wooshki keeping an eye on him. Hit in the air to shallow center field. Oncoming Jake Lacey will make the catch. And there are two outs in the inning. Stepping to the plate, center fielder Dagan Morcom. Out of the batter's box for BCSU, the center fielder Dagan Morcom. Morcom has got a lot of exercise this weekend, chasing all around center field after Bruin hits. Swings and misses on that first offering from Gavin Wooshke. That pitch stays up tall. Foul out of play over the third base side. Bellevue has made 16 of Vista NAIA World Series appearances all time, dating back to 1995. That pitch just misses. Two and two the count. 1995 was when Bellevue won the national championship. Runner goes, and that's hit and run into right field. One hop out there to Anthony Lynn. He'll come into the shortstop. On the cutoff man, wisely to keep the trailing runner for taking an extra base. So Kellen Scruggs advances to third. Dagan Morcom with the base hit. Runners at the corners with two outs. So a little threat here for Valley City. We saw them come back in the second game of yesterday's doubleheader. Trailing at that point 9 to nothing. They came back with six consecutive runs to get close but couldn't get over the hump. Top of the order, here's D.H. Torrey Nelson. Breaking ball for a called strike one. Upstairs, Bellevue has been to the NAIA World Series most recently in 2016, 2019, 2022, and 2023. Foul back, one and two the count. Wooshke had a little trouble in the first when two runners reached, but he stranded them with a strikeout. Has two runners on here in the fifth and one pitch away from a strikeout here. Torrey Nelson obviously trying to defend against that. Just stays, no, he does, he swung and missed. He gets away. From the catcher, Logan Grant, not in time on the throw to first base. So the run will score on the wild pitch. And Nelson does officially strike out, but he'll reach first base to keep the inning alive. Our score now is 6-1. to one. I thought initially it was foul tip back to the screen, but the breaking ball Nobody bounced and got away from Logan Grant. And now 6-1 to one our score as Jaden Babiuk steps in. A little chopper up the first base side. It's going to dribble into foul territory. Um, 
Runners at first and second with two away. Babiuk the two-hole hitter. Fastball misses up. One ball, one strike to count. Babiuk 0 for 2. Third time through the order for the Vikings against Gavin Wooshke. Down low, 2 and 1. Timeout requested as Logan Grant wants to head out to talk to his pitcher. Shortstop Brendan Luther will also join the party. Softball's going to extra tied at one. Update on the softball game between Bellevue and Valley City. Going into extra innings in the final game of their four-game set. Tied at one run apiece. Bellevue with a 3-0 series lead in that one just like the baseball squad has here and now home plate umpire Austin Nelson goes out to break up the gathering at the mound and that's the first conference for the Bruins two and one the count Pickoff play at second base. Whiskey just a little bit late in turning there. Shortstop Brendan Luther had snuck behind, but then had to wait for the throw. Popped up. Popped out of play. Starting to see some bodies moving around in the Bellevue bullpen. Not sure if they're actively throwing or just kind of moving around trying to stay warm. Wooski comes set on the 2-2 pitch. Up and away, full count. So the base runners will be off with the pitch. Head coach Alec De Maria reminding his lead runner that that's what you're supposed to do here on the 3-2 with two outs. Have an extra jump on a base hit trying to score. Bruin infielders on a ground ball will most likely have to make the play at first. Wooski steps off. And now back ready to work. The pitch chop foul off the front foot of Jaden Babiuk. He's going to need a moment or so to walk around and get some feeling back in the top of that. Spoiling a pretty good pitch from Wooski. Here we go with another full count pitch. Swung on and missed. Good pop on the fastball by Gavin Wooski for the strikeout to retire the side. One run in the inning on two hits. There were no errors and two runners left on base. After four and a half, the Bellevue Bruins six, the Valley City Vikings one. Two more techs in the queue. Keep it rolling, Bruins. The Grant family listening in in sunny Alberta, Canada. Glad you guys are with us. As I mentioned in yesterday's broadcast, I had a chance to work with Logan during the volleyball and basketball seasons this year. He was the one of the cameramen that we used to cover that action. Got a chance to visit with him and learn a little bit more about him. You've got a, a very nice young man there. So thanks for texting in today. And Keep up the good work, Logan and his entire family. A Vikings fan. Go Vikings from Great Falls, Montana. Love to number 31, Kay Clark. Keaton Clark. Very good. 
Well, Bellevue fans and Valley City fans, we're glad you're watching on this Saturday afternoon broadcast. We'll be back on Tuesday afternoon, Bellevue fans, as the Bruins take on Morningside University out of the Great Plains Athletic Conference. Bellevue plays Morningside and Briarcliff, both of them in Sioux City, both of them in the GPAC just about every year in baseball, a nice non-conference rivalry. Bottom of fifth inning for the Bellevue Bruins, C.J. Townsend will start things off. C.J. looking for his first hit of this game. Second baseman, C.J. Townsend. Here's the pitch from Jacob Marks. Down low, ball one. Again, the 10-run rule would apply in these nine-inning second games of the doubleheader should we get there. Right now, the Bruins with a five-run advantage. Strike called. Again, kind of the herky-jerky motion of Jacob Marks. Might take a couple of pitches to get used to. First time that you're seeing him as a Bellevue batter. He comes set. And then flips it. Into the zone, now one and two. Now two and two the count to CJ. CJ takes a Moment to step out, collect himself, now back in. Keeps his hand back, fouls off that breaking ball. Stays alive, will do 2-2 two -two once again. Marks delivers. Little chopper up the third base side. It's going to be a foul ball. A couple feet in foul territory. Third baseman Hunter Logan made an attempt at it. On the in-between hop. Came up empty. Six runs on seven hits for the Bellevue Bruins. One run on two hits for the Valley City Vikings. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. A little dribbler, and that will be an infield single or E5. Bill's debating on that one. That's so fun. Yeah. It's a play that should probably get made, but we'll go with it. I'm sorry? It's a play that should get made, but we'll go with it. All right. Bill decides that CJ has earned himself a hit on that one. A tough play for Hunter Logan having to charge. Couldn't glove it. So the Bruins have their leadoff guy on in the fifth inning. Next up, right fielder Anthony Lind. Anthony Lind. Lind fouls off the bun attempt. Bellevue has had their leadoff guy on in four of the first five innings. The only inning they didn't was the third when they went down in order. Jake Lacey accomplished that feat twice in the first and second. Bryce Zimmer did it in the fourth, and now C.J. Townsend in the fifth. Trying to shoot the outside corner, hits the outside black with the stitch for the called strike two. Anthony. A walk and a fly out in his two plate appearances this game. Throw to first base, close. But Townsend able to get back. Bryce had a couple of hits and a couple of RBIs in game number one today. Hit in the air to left field. Moving over to make the play, Cameron Perro. 
Gloves it for the first out. Here's Bryce Zimmer of the DH. I am the nice spot, the designated hitter. Number 12, Bryce Zimmer. Runner goes, hit opposite field, Perro can't get there, it's gonna drop. Good read on the play by C.J. Townsend to hold up at second base to see if it was gonna drop and it'll be a single for Bryce Zimmer, he'll advance to second on the throw to third base. Second hit of the game for Bryce Zimmer. He's swinging a hot bat in that D.H. roll today for the Bruins. A total of four hits combined in the doubleheader. Once again, the Vikings will have to move their infield in as Jake Lacey steps to the plate. Lacey a perfect seven for seven, reaching base today in the doubleheader. Breaking ball in the zone, strike one. With the infield in, they say your batting average improves 100 points, more or less. Cutting down those gaps. A base hit could score two with runners at second and third. Fly ball to center field. That should be deep enough to score number one. Morecambe had a little difficulty getting to it. He won't make a strong throw, so both runners will tag. And so a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Jake Lacey as C.J. Townsend scores and Bryce Zimmer advances to third. 7-1 our score, six-run cushion for the Bruins. A chance to add more for Logan Grant. For Bellevue, the catcher, Logan Grant. Last two times up, Grant, Viking pitchers have pitched very carefully to him. That one's up and away. Chabot had to come out to make the play. And again, a trip to the mound by Alex DeMaria. And he's going to go to the bullpen once again. And he's going to bring in a left-hander to face the left-hand hitting Logan Grant. So another call to the bullpen. This will be the fourth pitcher of the game. Jacob Marks, his day is done. He was pretty effective in the short time that he was on the mound, only allowing one run. Twenty something, twenty three. All right. Thank you for turning your back like that to show us. Uh, number twenty three is Riley Resnick. Riley Resnick. Again, good alliteration in that last name. Riley Resnick is a junior from Twin Valley, Minnesota. The South Paw will step in as the fourth pitcher of this game for Valley City as Alec De Maria is emptying the bullpen. Number 23, the left-handed pitcher, Riley Rusnick. There we go, Riley Rusnick has an 0-0 record on the season. He's only thrown three in the third innings. An 8.10 earned run action in that time. He's allowed only two hits. Has struck out six and walked four. Another pretty good sized guy on the mound. Resnick is six foot four. As somebody who is five foot nine, I've always been jealous of those six footers or whatever. I remember when I played, I was always have myself listed at five foot eleven on the on the roster, making me seem taller. Hey, I'm only an inch away, but I never really was anything other than five nine, maybe five foot ten, if I stood on my tiptoes. All right, let's get back to the action. Riley Resnick in relief for Valley City. He will face Logan Grant with a 1-0 count. Inherited 
from his predecessor, Jacob Marks. The two catchers exchange pleasantries. Chabot back into his squat. Grant into his stance. Again, hi to his folks listening on. Up north of the border. 2-0 now as that pitch misses away. Chestermere, Alberta. Logan said that's just about a, less than an hour away from the skiing up at Banff, Lake Louise area. That one's hit in the air to center field. Morcom, however, has a beat on it, and he will track it down for the catch. Back-to-back -back outs, and the side is retired. So Riley Resnick comes in and gets the job. Bellevue does pick up one more run on two hits. There are no errors. And one man left on base. After five complete, it's official. The Bellevue Bruins seven. And the Valley City Vikings one. Gavin Wooshke back to the mound as I step out to finish my sandwich. Gavin Wischke has thrown 80 pitches through the first five innings. So probably won't go the distance since this is a nine inning game, but he's been effective so far. Four strikeouts, two walks, both of those walks coming in the first inning. So he's been in the zone very effectively since that time, has allowed one run on two hits. First man he will face in the top of the sixth inning is the catcher, Jamel Chabot. Leading off the top of the six for VCSU, catcher Jamel Chabot. Wischke back to the action, his first pitch of the inning. A little bit low, ball one. Chabot walked his first time up, grounded out his second time. Right back through the box. Will any Bruin fielder be able to make a play? No, they will not. A single, infield single for Jamel Chabot. As he's been an effective hitter for the Vikings in this series. Hits in both games today. And hits in both games yesterday as the courtesy runner, Justin Rogers, checks back in for Chabot at first base. Caden Rosdema, the first baseman, steps in. Rosdema's also one for two, as Chabot was. Shows bunt, but bunts it foul. Vikings have tried to bunt their way on board or tried to sacrifice a couple of times in this series, but haven't been real effective. Rose to Masset, Wischke set, here's the pitch. Foul off the body of the batter, 0-2 the count. That one's hit hard, but well ahead and foul up the left field side. Rosdema got his arms extended on that one, but pulled the trigger too quickly. Good change of speed by Wooski. Still 0-2. Nobody out, runner at first. That one's going to be a wild pitch to advance Rodgers to second base. 
second wild pitch of the game against Wooshke. Logan Grant tried to slide out to his right, keep it in front, but it went off his shoulder. The runner in scoring position now for Rosedema. He had a couple of RBIs yesterday. Hit to center field, tracking it as Jake Lacey. And now looking to see if it was a catch made. Yes, they're going to say caught. The field umpire raised his hand for the out signal. We may have a protest here from Alec De Maria as Jake Lacey battling the sun and the wind kind of lost his footing. And now he's going to say safe. The base umpire initially put his hand up in an out signal. Oh, okay, so they were appealing the runner at sec. Well, if it wasn't a catch, then there's no reason for an appeal. Now, uh, Dwayne Mollox is out there d arguing the same thing I did. He put his hand up in a fist for an out. And now the two umpires are going to confer. Well, we used to always train our base runners on a contested play. Look to the umpire what his call is going to be. And clearly the base umpire had his hand up in the air in a fist for an out signal. Can't really change his mind after making that play. Everybody eyeing the conversation between the two umpires halfway between home and the pitcher's mound. Maybe they're asking for the help for the home plate umpire if he had any kind of an angle, but that's over 300 feet away. And we're just kind of hanging in limbo to see what the decision is going to be made. One team's going to be happy. The other team's going to be unhappy. We can't hear what's being said between the umpires and Dwayne Monlux right now. So, Okay, so as initially we, we thought, the runner at second, the batter, Caden Rosdema, is, well, now. <laughs> he's got to explain that he's out. Okay, so now he's got to explain to everybody field. So Caden Rosdema is out on the fly ball to center fielder Jake Lacey. The runner at third, Justin Rogers, the courtesy runner, is okay. He tagged up after the catch was made. All right, confusion reigned for a moment. I think we're back on the same page. And the next batter is Judson Selascar. Ball one on the first pitch. So runner at third, one away. Seven to one, our score. Top of the sixth inning. Fouled back off the net. One and one to sell a scar. He's 0 for 2 today in today's game. Came on as a pinch hitter in game number one. So it's still been one hit this inning? Yes. Single? That's the second on the wild pitch. Here's the pitch from Ushki. Outside, throw to third base. Just getting the hand back. Is Justin Rogers. Looks like that was a called play from the Bruin bench. Logan Grant on a perfect throw to Nick Grade covering, but Rogers just able to get those fingertips back to the bag in time. Line hard. Alec Ackerman with a good pick going to the line. The toss to Wooski at first base in time. For the second out of the inning, 3-1 to one on the play, but credit Judson Salascar with an RBI as Justin Rogers comes in to score. First baseman Alec Ackerman was the Bruins shortstop two years ago, so flashing some leather, kind of nice to have a good defensive player there at first base, Alec making the play. So now 7-2 to two our score, the batter is Cameron Perro. Ball one on the first pitch from Gavin. Now 2-0. Oh. 
as Gavin is over the 90 pitch mark. Fouled back, two and one. The set and the delivery. Chopper up the third base line is foul. Final score from the softball game across town. Valley City State comes back to win the final game of the four-game set in extra innings by a score of 2-1. to one. But the Bruins do take the series three games to one. Fouled into the Bruin dugout. And we've got a little piece of head coach Dwayne Monlux. Kind of pinballed around between the backstop, the dugout, and the front railing. Dwayne, a pretty good baseball player himself back in his college days at Dickinson State University. Played basketball and football. I think he played basketball too, didn't he? Baseball, baseball, and uh, baseball and football for sure. He played basketball. basketball too? All right. Semi pro football. Fouled out of play. Yeah, he played semi pro football too in the same league that. Omaha is in. I was the PA announcer for the Omaha Bee for the first couple of years. I, he may have been on the Wyoming roster back in the day. The pitch in the zone called strike three, and the side is retired. One run on one hit. There were no errors, and nobody left on base in the top of the sixth. With the end of that inning, the score now, Bellevue 7 and Valley City 2. We head to the bottom of the six. Alex De Maria and the home plate umpire still discussing that controversial play. Austin Nelson behind the dish. Way to go, Seagers, with that hit. That puts him at an 11-game hitting streak. Knock on wood. Stay hot, Bruins. All right. 11-game hitting streak for C.J. Townsend on that single in the fifth inning. C.J., the leading hitter for the Bruins, batting average-wise at 389 coming in. One for three in this game, and... One for two with two walks in the first game. No, well, he's still going to be leading the team. All right, let's get ready for the bottom of the sixth inning. The Bruins will send the 3-4-5 part of the order up against relief pitcher Riley Resnick. Six. Here's Alec Ackerman stepping to the plate, made a nice defensive play in the last half inning. Now he'll get the chance to lead it off in the bottom of the sixth. Riley Resnick versus Alec Ackerman, another alliteration special here. In the zone with a breaking ball to start the count. Ripped hard down the line, a backhanded stop by the third baseman, Hunter Logan, the throw across the diamond in time to retire Alec Ackerman. A good defensive play at the hot corner by Logan. Next up for the Bruins, left fielder Steven Elsner. Elsner, one for two with a run batted in in today's game. A left fielder, Steven Elsner. And as you look down on the field, you can see that the shadows from the hills and the trees to the west side of the field 
starting to creep out over near the home plate area. On the knees for a called strike one. Wind continues to blow. It's been doing that all day long. Steady at around 20 with Gus up above 30. Now one and one to count. That was, uh... C.S. Lewis versus J.R. Tolkien. Backdoor breaking ball for the called strike two. Elsner not thrilled by either of those strike calls, but it is what it is. Now he's readying for the next pitch from Resnick. Again, a hard hit ball on the third baseline. This time, Hunter Logan can't come up with it. Deflects off his glove. He has to track it down, down the line a little further. So a base hit from Steven Elsner on a too hot to handle. Brendan Luther steps up for the Bruins, the shortstop. Elsner, the runner at first base, does have one stolen base on the season. Shows bunt, pulls it back as the pitch is up and in. I mentioned in game number one, it was a feast or famine for Steve Elsner. He struck out twice and then homered. Just the opposite for Brendan Luther. He homered first and has struck out the last two times up. Let's see if he can change his luck. Breaking ball clips the inside corner, one and one. Showed bond on the first pitch. Did not on the second. Let's see what happens here. Resnick with a long hold. Runner goes on the hit and run. Fouled back to the screen. Dwayne Modlick's not afraid to use the hit and run. We've seen that several times today for the Bruins. It's been pretty effective on a couple of opportunities, both today and yesterday. One time the Bruins, Bruins lined into a double play, but every other time it has worked very well. Resnick looks into Chabot for the sign. Comes set just above the belt. Goes over to first. It's a pickoff move over there. And now Elsner will able to get to second base as a throw goes out into left field. Stolen base or is that an error on the throw? All right. So Elsner reaches second on the E3 on the throw from Caden Rosdeba. First air of this game. It's been a pretty well played series. Resnick looks back in, shakes off the first sign. Now readies. Now delivers. A swing and a miss. Oh, Brendan Luther. The hat trick of strikeouts after a two run home run to start the day. Nick Grade will try to keep the inning alive for the Bruins with a runner in scoring position. Third baseman, Nick Grade. Grade one for three. Upstairs on the fastball. Line hard, but foul up the left field side. Timer, 
Seven to two our score. We're at the bottom of the sixth inning. One and one the count on third baseman Nick Grade. On the outside corner, the called strike. Pace of the game kind of slowed down here over the last inning or two. Way wide. There's no pitch clock available at John Stella Field, but the base umpire is supposed to keep track no more than 20 seconds between pitches. Riley Resnick gets pretty close to that 20-second mark. Way wide on that one. I believe next year, isn't it, that college baseball is supposed to put in a pitch clock visible on the field? What's up? Next year, are they supposed to have a 20-second pitch clock visible on the field? They're thinking about it. Okay. I thought I read that somewhere where it's in discussion. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Riley Resnick. Gets out of the inning with no further damage. No runs on one hit. No errors and one man left on base. The Bruins have left base runners on each of the last three innings, but they still maintain a five-run cushion at 7-2 to two as we head to the top of the seventh. Head to the top of seventh. And a pitching change for the home team Bruins. Day is done for Gavin Wischke, but he is the pitcher of record. If the Bruins hold the lead, he would go to 3-0. and oh. The new Bellevue pitcher is number 11, Kenji Miller. Kenji, a veteran member of the Bellevue squad, will come on in relief. Number 11, the left-hander, Kenji Miller. Kenji is 6'2", junior, out of Shoreline, Washington. This will be the fourth appearance of the year for Kenji. He's thrown a total of six innings in that time. He's allowed eight hits. has struck out four and walked three. Kenji Miller, the new Bellevue pitcher, coming on in relief of starter Gavin Wooshke. Quality start for Gavin, only allowing the two runs on three hits. Second year in the Bellevue program for Kenji. He threw 15 and two-thirds innings last year. Started his college career at Everett Community College in Everett, Washington. Home of the Everett Aqua Sox, one of my favorite minor league baseball caps. Their little Dion Green frog mascot on their cap. All right, here we go. Top of the seventh inning. Starting it off is second baseman Kellen Shrugs. Second baseman Kellen Shrugs. Shrugs one for two in this game. Every time I see his name this weekend, Scruggs, I think of Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, the old country duo. Fouled up the third baseline. Scruggs will head back to the plate. Here's the delivery from Miller. Fouled back to the netting once again. One ball, two strikes to count.
Tries to get the fastball by Scruggs, but fouls it off to stay alive. Kenji listed at six foot two, 180 pounds. A slim framed guy. Delivers that pitch, but a little bit low. Two and two the count. Trying to keep the Valley City Vikings from gaining any momentum. Bruins nursing a five run lead. Miller winds, delivers. Misses down low, full count. Get ready for the payoff pitch. Here it is. Just a little bit low. And Kellen Scruggs will draw the leadoff walk. Not what the Bellevue coaching staff wanted to do to start off the inning. Next up for the Vikings, third baseman Hunter Logan. Hunter Logan. Popped up in the shallow center field. Three players converging on it. A nice play on the run by C.J. Townsend to make the over-the-shoulder catch for the first out of the inning. Good hustle by the Bruins second baseman to get there. Time tonight's spot. The center fielder, Dagan Morecambe. Dagan Morecambe next up for the Vikings. Just off the end of the bat, foul. The 0-1 breaking ball, nicely located outer half, now 0-2. Morecambe has been a very pesky hitter out of that nine-hole spot for Valley City. One for two in today's contest was two for three in today's opener. Trying to go a little further away, ball in the dirt, runner down to second base. And he will get there in time. Rule that a wild pitch. Just squirted away far enough from Logan Grant for Kellen Scruggs to take advantage and move up 90 feet. Now he's in scoring position with one out, four more come. And continuing my thought, Morecambe has had a hit in each of the four games in this series. Foul out of play, opposite way. Back in the day, coaches used to kind of dump their worst hitter in that nine-hole spot, but anymore these days, you try to put somebody who's very similar to a leadoff guy, guy that can get on base, start things from the top of the order next time around. Morcom fits that role, at least here this weekend. Again, gets away from Grant on the swing and the miss. He's able to get to it and fire it down to Ackerman at first base for the strikeout for the second out of the inning. But on the play, Scruggs advancing to third, so another wild pitch. In addition to the strikeout, first strikeout of the game for Kenji Miller as he tries to strand the runner at third. At the top of the order, here's Tory Nelson. Bruins are regular depth on the infield with two outs. First pitch fastball, two hopper to C.J. Townsend. He gloves it moving to his right and throws it across the diamond for the out. So the inning started defensively with a nice play by Townsend on the fly ball and ends on moving to his right to make the play. We head to the bottom of the side. No runs on no hits. There were no errors and one man left on base. Bottom of the seventh inning upcoming. Bruins lead it by five. Seven to two, our score. So it's a one point game.
two left-handers on the mound. As we continue on to the bottom of seventh inning, Riley Resnick's turn to get back to work for his Vikings of Valley City, North Dakota. Kenji Miller, after an inning of relief work, back on the bench. We'll see if he comes out for more work or if the Bruins decide to use some extra bodies down for the final couple of innings. Or the Bruins could score five runs here in this bottom half of the inning and we won't have to worry about any more pitching changes. Leading it off, C.J. Townsend, the second baseman, one for three today in this contest. The the 11 game hitting streak for CJ. Thanks again to his family for letting me know that. Started on the Florida trip, continues here back at the friendly confines of John Stella Field. Here's Riley Resnick's first pitch, up and away, ball one. Again, for those of you who do not know, John Stella. John, kind of a South Omaha baseball institution through the 1950s to present. Swing and a miss. John played at high school ball at Omaha South, went on to serve in the military, in the Navy, I believe, and then went to college on the what they used to call the bootstrapper program at Omaha University where he was a college star. 1-1 one, one pitch, now 2-1. Was drafted by the San Francisco Giants. Made it through a couple of levels of their minor league system, but he was a center fielder, and the Giants already had a guy named Willie Mays that was pretty darn good. John returned to Omaha, was a longtime coach at Omaha South High School, his alma mater, as C.J. fouls that one up the third base side, two and two the count. John spent many years at Omaha South, and their summer American Legion baseball programs as well, training the youth of this area, spent uh, countless hours here working on the field, was part of the group that organized the revitalization of Brown Park. They named the field after him about 12 years or so ago, and unfortunately, John passed away in December. Swing and a miss, foul tipped into the glove of the catcher. So the strikeout, that's three consecutive strikeouts for Riley Resnick as he's come on with a strong showing in relief. So to John and his family, we extend our sympathies. We miss you. He was a frequent visitor to the Bellevue games as well as games for Omaha South High School. Here's right fielder Anthony Lind. Upstairs, ball one. As an Omaha Central High School player, Anthony saw John on the field quite frequently in the opposite team's coaching box and in the dugout. Lind 0 for 2 in this one. On the outside edge, 1 and 1 the count. That one's hit hard to the right side. Seliscar, the right fielder, won't have enough room to make the play. One hops the fence. And Anthony Lind goes opposite way to get a one-out double. So now eight of the nine starters have had at least one hit in this second game of the doubleheader. Lind will run his batting guard over to associate head coach Mitch Schmidt in the first base box and then retreat to second base. That'll bring to the plate designated hitter, Bryce Zimmer. Bryce with two hits already today Zimmer. in this contest. Also a couple of hits in game number one, the Bruins 18 to two route in the first game. Low and away on the pitch from Resnick. Resnick sets just above the belt. Looks Lind back to second and delivers to Zimmer. Outside corner, just off the outside edge. Just a bit outside. P 
pitcher and catcher on the same page signal wise. Upstairs, 2 0. Oh. Crowd has grown as the day has gone on. There's a pitch down the heart, two and one. Still not the large crowds we'll see later in the year when we get temperatures into the 70s and 80s and people come out to watch baseball and work on their tans. Here's the 2-1 from Resnick. Runner goes from third base. Breaking ball in the zone for the called strike. And a stolen base. A great jump by Anthony Lind. So another stolen base for the Bruins. And now Lynn just 90 feet away. That'll force the Vikings infield to come in. Three balls, two strikes to count on Zimmer. And the pitch. Line foul up the third base side by the feet of head coach Dwayne Monlux. Seven runs on 11 hits for Bellevue. Two runs on three hits for Valley City. Bruins trying to open up an even larger cushion. Similar uh, shot down that third base side. Dwayne Monlux and Anthony Lynn having to stay on their toes on those balls coming their direction opposite way. Again, the pitch. A little chopper right back to the mound. Looking the runner back to third, and then Resnick throws the ball past the first baseman out into right field. Rounding second on his way to third is Bryce Zimmer. So Zimmer will reach on the throwing air by the pitcher. Anthony Lynn will come in to score on the play. No RBI since he wasn't correct wasn't heading toward home place to start with, heading back. So the Bruins pick up an unearned run there, or possible unearned run. Top of the batting order. Still just one out in the inning, and back to the top of the order, here's center fielder Jake Lacey. And again, the Vikings will have to bring the infield in. Resnick made the right play, fielding the ball, looking the runner back to third. But then in his hurry to get it to first, it just kind of sailed and wound up down the right field corner. That one's foul out of play by Lacey. Eight to two, our score. A little up. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Fouled again up the third baseline. Third time in about the last six pitches or so, we've had one shot down that direction. Swing and a miss. May have been a changeup as it kind of went down and away from Lacey. The first time today, Jake Lacey has not reached base or had a sacrifice. Fourth strikeout of the game for Riley Resnick. And it'll be up to Logan Grant now to drive the runner home from third. Infield can move back to their regular positions. Lefty-lefty matchup. Let's see how... Resnick attacks Grant. Outside corner called strike one.
Shadows over home plate, most of the way to the pitcher's mound. Riley Resnick still standing in the bright sunshine. Swing and a miss. Logan with a big pull swing. That time it came up empty. Now down 0-2. Popped up, will it stay in play? Chabot the catcher has room and he'll make the catch to retire the side. So Bellevue does pick up one run, unearned. One run on one hit, there was one error and one man left on base as we head to the top of the eighth inning. It's now Bellevue eight and Valley City two. Two innings to go are technically an inning and a half if Bellevue fans hoping. And it'll be Kenji Miller back to the mound for his second inning of relief work. He'll be looking at the two, three, four holes in the Valley City State lineup in the eighth. Watching the broadcast from Regina, Saskatchewan, Valley City starting pitchers family. Great job on the broadcast. Well, thank you for the compliment. Very entertaining. Keep up the good work. Pronouncing of the starter's first name isn't correct, however. Laugh out loud. I'm assuming that is Cookson, T-A-K-A-O. I thought they said Takao, but if you would send along the frenetic pronunciation, I'll try to get that correct. Thanks for watching today on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Mick Krupski here doing the broadcast. 16 years I've been behind the microphone at Bellevue University. I'm an old guy. Yeah. Former high school teacher and coach. Former marketing guy after that. Coached baseball, volleyball, basketball in high school. Played baseball from the time I was seven until the time I was 59. That's 10 years ago. I'm an old guy. Having fun every ball game, hanging around with knuckleheads like this up in the press box and talking with you guys at home, listening on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. All right, two innings to go to see if the Bruins are able to get the four-game sweep to start the season or if Valley City State can come back to salvage one of the four. Jaden Babiuk, the shortstop, will start things off. Jaden Babiuk. Second team All-American, or second team All-Conference player last year. Oh, hello. That one goes all the way to the screen. Babiuk 0 for 3 in this contest. The 1 0 pitch from Miller. Now 2 0. Kenji walked the leadoff man last inning, his first inning of relief, trying not to deja vu it here in the eighth. Hit in the air to right field. Anthony Lynn back to the edge of the warning track, and he'll be able to make the catch. The ball didn't sound real good coming off the bat that time. Didn't hit it fully square. And Babiuk retired for the first out of the inning. Next up, the catcher, Jamel Chabot. That's the plate for BCSU. Catcher, Jamel Chabot. Chabot, another one of the Vikings who's had a hit in each of the games in this series. A couple of Vikings and several Bruins have accomplished that feat this weekend. That pitch a little bit low. Now 2-0. Oh, no. <laughs> Miller working from the stretch. 
hit in the air, also to right field. Anthony Lynn giving Chase a full out dive. A great play by Anthony to sprawl and dive and catch and record the second out of the inning. That was quite the effort by the Bruin right fielder. He gets some applause from his teammates on that first base side of the field. A couple of guys even coming out of the dugout to cheer his effort on that play. Next up, the cleanup hitter, first baseman, Caden Rosdema. Swing and a miss on the Miller fastball. Off the outside edge. Swing and a miss again. Good pop on the fastball. One and two the count. Rosedema 0 for 2 with the walk. Blocked up by Grant on the pitch in the dirt. Two and two. Little chopper, come backer to Kenji. He'll glove it and toss it over to first base to Alec Ackerman to retire the side. One to three on the play. So two put outs in right field for Lind and an infield grounder. A one, two, three, top of the eighth inning. Only one inning to go. As a little discussion here with couple of Valley City players and their first base coach. Looks like, I don't know if they were arguing that that should have been a foul ball. Whatever it is, the argument is over and, and we move on. The Bruins will be sending up the 3-4-5 part of the order. Leading by six. Riley Resnick back to the pitcher's mound, trying to finish this one off in the bottom of the eighth inning, trying to hold the Bruins. If Bellevue does score four runs, the game would be over with with a 10-run rule. No Resnick trying to prevent that. Last year, the Bruins had an overall record of 48 and 10. Valley City, an overall record of 13 and 34. In conference play, Bellevue finished 25 and 3 overall. Valley City, 8 and 20. That was last year. This year, Bellevue. Now 14 and 9, 3 and 0 in conference. Valley City 8 and 13, 0 and 3 in conference. And that throw down to second base took a piece out of second baseman Kellen Scruggs. It short hopped. I think it caught him in the head, the side of the head. He's down on one knee, and the trainer will come out of the dugout to take a look at him. Viking catcher Jamel Chabot out there as well. Not the way you want to near the end of a four-game set taking a throw off the side of the head. I thought it got him off the head, but the way he's hunched over right now, it might have been a, about two feet lower. So 
we'll have a little bit of a delay as Kellen able to regroup a bit. All right, here we go with the bottom of the eighth inning. It'll be three-hole hitter Alec Ackerman to lead things off. And the third spot. First baseman, number 16, Alec Ackerman. They allow Riley Resnick a couple of extra throws with the delay. And now we've got about three baseballs flying around here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Alex, step in there and let's get going with the bottom of the eighth inning. Alec 0 for 3 in this final game of the series with a walk. So he'd love to have some fun here. Get a hit. And that's a nice little hit over the left field fence. That one is out of here. Alec Ackerman with a big blow on the first pitch of the eighth inning. Saving it up for the end with that solo home run to make it a 9-2 score for Alec Ackerman. That is his fifth home run of the season. And now 19 runs batted in. <laughs> and some fist bumps for some of the kids in the crowd. I think those are the sons of former Bellevue athletic trainer Tyler Komitcher, they're as happy as he is after that long home run. Alec Ackerman joining in the hit parade today. Here's Steve Elsner. Elsner had a home run in the last game. And that one bounced to the plate by Resnick. So a seven-run lead for the Bruins. Elsner two for three with the walk. A run scored and a run batted in. 1-1 one, one to count. Upstairs, 2-0. Two and a third innings pitched thus far for Riley Resnick. He's allowed three hits, two runs. Fouled out of play opposite way. Four strikeouts for Resnick in those two and a third innings. Steven Elsner not real happy with that call as he goes down for the strikeout for the first out of the inning. But getting late in the day, the home plate might have expanded just a little bit on that last call. Brendan Luther, the Bruin shortstop, steps in. Shortstop, Brendan Luther. Okay, Brendan, enough of this. Three consecutive strikeouts, time to... Make some contact here. He does, but it's foul up the third base side. Two run home run in the first, and then frustration since. Hasn't let it affect his defensive play, however. Resnick with the shake for the signal from Chabot. Outside. 1-1 one, one the count. Nebraska just hit a three, got a three-point play, but they're still behind nine. It's a minute eight, and it's... Up the middle, backhanded play by Scruggs. The throw to first base is just in time. A one-hop throw over there fielded by Caden Rosdema. Four to three on the play for the second out of the inning and a bang bang play at first. 
Nick Gray tried to keep the inning going for the Bruins. Bellevue's third baseman is one for four. Two hits for Lacey. One hit for Grant. One hit for Ackerman. And that one slices off the body of Nick Grade. He'll reach on the hit by pitch. Elsner with two hits. Luther with one. Grade with one. One for Townsend. One for Lind. And two for Zimmer. So every Bruin starter, again, as they did in game number one, has at least one hit on this game. Here's C.J. Townsend at the plate. Inside, ball one. Pick off at first base. Not close as grade. Not a very big lead. Bruin base runners probably not going to be going anywhere with a seven-run lead. And with a nice move by the left-hander Resnick. Probably going to stay close to the bag. Fast ball down the plate. One ball, one strike to count on Townsend. Again, Bellevue averaging just under seven runs per game on the season. Have nine. Valley City averaging about four and a half. They've got two. Change up. Resnick took a lot off that delivery. Had Townsend out in front. Runner goes, fouled back to the net. Grade back to first. Townsend back to the batter's box. Grade probably going on his own in that situation. Off the outside edge. 2-2. Two, two. Pick off move. Throw down to second base. And again, it's a little bit off the mark. Allowing Grade to reach second base. Bill. E3 on the throw once again. Kind of a difficult play because the middle infielders are trying to cover to the base. The first baseman's trying to throw and hit a moving target. So, unfortunately, for Caden and Rosema, two times today that has happened. That accounts for two of the three errors on the scoreboard for the Vikings. So runner in scoring position now, and the pitch is outside. That'll bring up a full count for C.J. Townsend. With two outs, Nick Grade will be going with the crack of the bat. Anthony Lind awaiting on deck should the inning continue. Upstairs, ball four. And so Anthony will be able to step to the plate one more time here. A double his last trip in a one for three day. Right fielder, Anthony Lind. Resnick up to 59 pitches in his three innings of relief work. But first a visit with his catcher, Jamel Chabot. And there is somebody throwing in the bullpen for Valley City, but I wouldn't think they would make a change at this point. Just kind of maybe somebody getting some work in. Or Rest, 
Conversation continues. And now finally breaking up. Second visit to the mound. He has Anthony Lind ready at the home plate area. And Resnick taking his time. Now he delivers, and that one gets away from the catcher on the wild pitch. Two runners will advance. And we'll have a pinch runner in at second base for C.J. Townsend coming into the game for the Bruins. Number two, Tyler Monroe. C.J. has kind of a gimpy knee. He tweaked it yesterday, so Monroe in to run. That one's hit hard down the left field side. Will it stay fair? It will not. It goes foul. Anthony Lynn put a charge into it, and after that last pitch, out comes head coach Alex De Maria. And it looks like we will have an eighth inning pitching change as the day is done for Riley Resnick. He will finish with 60 pitches thrown. Three innings pitched, six, excuse me, three runs. I'll get it right yet. Three, three hits, two runs, one earned. Struck out five as this call to the bullpen will bring in the fifth pitcher of the game for Valley City. That looked like number 51. 51. We saw him yesterday as well. It's the brother of catcher Jamel Chabot. It's Eli Chabot. He got about an inning wor worth of work yesterday. And he's back on again today to try to finish this one up for the Vikings. Chabot is the freshman of the Chabot brothers out of Cheney, Washington, five foot ten. Pitcher slash infielder. He came in in the first game of the series in relief of Hunter Magnuson. And through an inning in the third. We'll go with that. Yeah, I was griping about that song earlier. Now, this is a good baseball field song. The Who? Baba O'Reilly. Wind continues to blow from left to right. It's been doing that all day long. Hasn't had too much of an effect on the game. All right, Chabot is ready. The Chabot battery for Valley City will be facing Anthony Lind with a count of one ball and one strike. Inherited from Riley Resnick. Anton Lind readies. Breaking ball on the inside corner. One and two. Home run would win it for the Bruins by the 10 run rule. 
That won't happen here, however, as back-to-back -back breaking balls in the zone for the strikeout to retire the side. For the Bellevue Bruins in the bottom of the eighth inning, the solo home run from Alan, Alec Alvar. My brain is shutting down. Alec Hackerman with a solo home run. One run on one hit. There was one error and two men left on base as we head to the ninth inning. The Bellevue Bruins lead it by a score of 9-2. to two. All right, Kenji Miller's day is done as the Bruins go to another reliever, number 41, Jaden Vinson. Left-handed pitcher, a junior, 5'11", from Portland, Oregon. So a couple of Oregonians in the game for the Bruins. Left-handed pitcher, number 41, Jaden Vinson. Grab my stat sheet here. Tell you a little bit more about Vinson. Seventh appearance on the season for Jaden. He's thrown nine in the third innings thus far. He's allowed 16 hits, has struck out seven. Shadows covering most of the infield now. The pitcher's mound and home plate both in shadow. So that takes away the little advantage the pitchers had by being in the sunshine with the hitters in the dark. Although the rest of the field beyond still in the sunshine. As the day goes on, now right field kind of becomes the sunshine field. So Anthony Lynn will have to contend with that out there. Thank you. Pinch hitter for Valley City, number 29, Anthony Madsen. Hitting for the Vikings, number 29, Anthony Madsen. Ball one on the first offering from Jaden Vinson. Southpaw from the windup delivers. Back to the screen. And we've got a catching change as well. Trad Richardson behind the dish for the Bruins. Against the screen, fouled. Two and one the count. Trad, the junior from Frenchtown, Montana. Behind the dish, awaiting the two one pitch. Right down the heart of the plate, two and two. Vincent looks in, begins the wind, misses inside. Richardson keeps it in front. The count runs full. Gavin Wooshke was the starter. He went six. Kenji Miller went two. A great stop, a great diving play by Nick Grade, jumping, spearing the ball at the apex of his jump. Gets some style points for that one, a smile on his face as he returns the ball to pitcher Jaden Vinson. L5 on that play. Next up, left fielder Cameron Perro. Low and in. Perro, another one of the Canadian players. Lashburn, Saskatchewan. So we're learning all kinds of Canadian provinces this weekend. 2-0 the count. 0 for 3 in this contest. That one's... Lined into left field, a one-hop base hit. Out to left fielder Steven Elsner. So the Viking left fielder hits it to the Bruin left fielder. He's a one-out base runner. Second baseman, Kellen Scruggs. Now batting the second baseman, Kellen Scruggs. Thank you. 
Big swing comes up empty. Bruins finished game number one on an around the horn double play. Maybe an opportunity to do it again here. Vincent looks the runner back at first. Delivers home way wide. Nice play by Richardson to move to his right and spirit. Tried to check his swing, but couldn't. Goes around. Now one and two. Fouled against the net. Count remains one and two. Doubleheader started at 12 noon Central Time. We're about five and a half hours into this one. That was hit in the air to left center field. Has some carry, but the Bruins able to collect it. Jake Lacey gets over there to make the catch for the second out of the inning. That one knocked down a little bit by the wind, blowing from left to right. That takes the Vikings to their final out. Add another pinch hitter. 26, number 26 is Isaac Warholic. Strike one to Warholic. He's hitting in the spot of third baseman Hunter Logan. Logan was 0 for 3 today. Up and away. Vincent trying not to be distracted by the base runner at first. Cameron Perro, who's dancing around over there, trying to get his attention. Instead, focusing on home plate. That pitch in the dirt. Up by seven runs. That's where your focus should be at the batter. One out away from getting it out of this series with a four game sweep fastball fouled back two and two on Warholic Warholic from St. Paul Alberta and he'll go down looking for the strikeout to retire the side and end today's final game with the Bellevue Bruins coming away with a 9-2 victory. For the Bellevue Bruins, nine runs on 12 hits. There were no errors. For the Valley City Vikings, two runs on four hits. They committed three errors. With the victory, the Bellevue Bruins are now 15-9 and nine overall, four and all in the North Central, or excuse me, the North Star Athletic Association. With the loss, Valley City drops to 8 and 17 overall and 0 and 4 in conference play. Winning pitcher is the Bellevue starter, Gavin Wooshke, who goes to 3 and 0 on the season. Again, we want to remind you, we will be back with more baseball on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network as the Morningside Mustangs come to John Stella Field at Brown Park on Tuesday afternoon, March 19th, a 2 o'clock start in that single nine-inning game, Bruins against the Mustangs. Thanks to all the folks working behind the scenes here in the press box at Brown Park. Thanks to all of you for listening in, and a special thank you to all those people who played along with me and sent along their text messages as well. A lot more baseball coming your way in this 2024 season. Keep it right here on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Mick Krupski signing off for now. Talk to you again at another baseball game down the road probably Tuesday. Keep it right here on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network.